Welcome back to the stream. Many people may have long COVID without ever having tested positive for the virus in the first place. That is according to a new study published yesterday out of Northwestern Medicine right here in Chicago. Joining us now is Dr. Igor Koralnik from Northwestern Medicine, Chief of Neuroinfectious Diseases and Global Neurology. Doctor, thank you for being here. Good morning, Brad. Good morning to all, and thank you for inviting me. You've got a delightful accent. Let's just get it out of the way. Your heritage is? Swiss, French-speaking from Geneva. Swiss, French-speaking Geneva. That is uh, delightful. And you corrected, say croissant again. I said to say croissant earlier with uh, what Starbucks is adding. I should have said what? Croissant. Croissant. Okay, we've got that out. Uh, thrilled to have you on about the study. The study found nearly 10 million Americans uh, had developed long COVID without a positive test. So just let's kind of get in the weeds here. This study supposes that they had it, never knew, but now have long COVID issues. Kind of a dumb question here. Um, you know, how do you extrapolate 10 million people have long COVID if they never tested positive? Is there some type of telltale sign you know, some people might say, hey, are they just dealing with, with other issues? How, how did you, you know, form th this number, this group? So you remember that at the beginning of the pandemic, it was impossible to get tested if you did not, were not hospitalized with pneumonia. Even when tests became more readily available, people tested negative because they may not be shedding virus at the time. So we um, estimated that uh, uh, those people still needed to be taken care of. And we opened the doors or, of our neuro COVID-19 clinic to those patients, the so-called COVID negative long holders. And the purpose of this study was to determine if there was any sign that they had indeed been exposed to the virus. Mm -hmm. And we looked in their blood with very sensitive assay and we found immunologic signatures, either mediated by T lymphocytes or by antibodies, that 41% in a small study had indeed been exposed to the virus that caused uh -huh. COVID-19. Okay. So we feel that for those people who had been constantly rejected and stigmatized because they were COVID negative, although they had long COVID symptoms, that would be very vindicating. So you found an actual empirical data, a thumbprint that says, yes, you did have it. That's fascinating. So right now, many post COVID clinics require a positive test. Northwestern is an exception. You evaluate patients without an official diagnosis. Clearly, this study is showing that a positive test or initial diagnosis should not be prerequisite, correct? Yes, because we understood the limitation of COVID-19 testing early mm -hmm. in the pandemic, we decided, we made a conscious decision not to require a positive COVID-19 test to be evaluated in the clinic. And we also uh, gave full access to patients but not, by not requiring physician referral. Anybody who wants to come to see us can just go on the phone and make an appointment. We have now 13 subspecialty clinic at the Northwestern Medicine Comprehensive COVID Center, including neurology, pulmonology, cardiology, gastroenterology, and so on, for the total care of long COVID patients. Remarkable. Another study published this week in Nature found that people who had even a mild case of COVID are at risk two years later, two years, for dozens of medical conditions, lung problems, diabetes, cardiovascular troubles, even an elevated risk of death. What are you witnessing when people walk into the clinic and find out they're experiencing a uh, long COVID? I mean, I'm sure it runs the gamut, but what, what, what are some of the typical things? Uh, shortness of breath, uh, what are you seeing? So in the neuro COVID clinic, we see patients who have neurologic manifestation of long okay. COVID. And the most frequent one is brain fog, where people feel that they have difficulty concentrating, mm. difficulty with attention, difficulty with memory, multitasking, and working in their current job uh, um, uh, as usual. And uh, they also have decreased quality of life, 
because of all those problems. They also have intense fatigue and exercise intolerance, and some also complain of headache, of dizziness, of muscle pain, and problem with smell and taste. So when they come to see us in the clinic, we, as we see them for one hour, initial visit, we ask a complete history, we do a complete uh, neurology exam, and we establish a differential diagnosis to see if something else can be at play that needs to be treated differently. After that, we uh, determine a treat an investigation plan and a treatment plan for them, and they feel very relieved that finally somebody is uh, interested to listen to them and to care for them. Yeah, it sounds like a nightmare. I know brain fog alone is sometimes compared to an amount to like chemo brain. I mean, it can almost be debilitating with people functioning and, and thinking and, and, and not, not only not multitasking, just doing singular tasks. Um, to date, Northwestern's Neuro COVID Clinic has treated more than 2,000 long haulers. Uh, from some 44 states, you guys are really at the forefront of all this, people coming from all over. What, what progress have you made since day one in, in treating um, these debilitating sometimes symptoms? So the clinic opened in May 2020. Um, and as you know, we have uh, now seen uh, more than actually 2,100 patients. We are interested to first determine their uh, different cognitive problems. So because brain fog is not one size fits all, some patients have problem with attention, some problem with memory, some problem, some with the multitasking abilities. And we give them objective cognitive tests in the clinic uh, to pinpoint better what is bothering uh, them and how to better treat them with cognitive rehabilitation that we are now doing with our colleagues at Shirley Ryan Ability Lab across the street from Northwestern. We also treat their symptoms with medication for fatigue, for pain, for headache, and so on. And we make sure that nothing else is at play that could explain their fatigue, for example, that they don't have sleep apnea, and so on. We also perform research to try to understand what's causing COVID, uh, long COVID in the first place. Why do some people get COVID and get over it without having lingering symptoms? And why approximately 30% of the patients will still have some lingering symptoms lasting more than four weeks? And we're looking at biomarkers. We're looking at their immune response. We think that long COVID is a new autoimmune syndrome that is caused by the virus confusing the immune system that there's something wrong in the body that needs to be attacked. And when we understand that better, we'll be able to better hopefully treat those patients and pre prevent long COVID. Fascinating. A lot to unpack there, but everything you said, I now understand. Um, keep up the important work and thank you for uh, the insight today. Dr. Igor Korolnik, the Chief of Neurosciences and Infectious Diseases, Neuroinfectious Diseases and Global Neurology at Northwestern Medicine. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.